Researchers at the University of the Western Cape have gained some insight into COVID-19. I'm now joined on the line by Peter van Heusten, who is a researcher at the South African National Bioinformatics Institute at the University of the Western Cape. Thanks so much for your time on SABC News this afternoon. Please explain to us in very simple terms what genome sequencing is and what your research did to get insight into COVID-19. So we worked with um, our colleagues at the National Institute for Clinical Diseases to take a sample of the virus from a, a patient that had COVID-19 and extract just the, um, uh, uh, the virus from uh, the sample. Because obviously what you start off with is a mixture of human and a virus, okay? Mm -hmm. And then you can extract in the lab the virus and... Uh, then you read it into a thing called a DNA sequencing machine. So what a genome is, is the instructions for how a virus puts itself together that allow a virus to make copies for itself and therefore infect us, okay? So you get this out of the, the, the patient, and then you read it out like you're reading a book. But it's, uh, the total size of the virus is about 29,000 characters, uh, uh, but we read it out of 150 characters at a time, and then we have to piece it together to get a full picture of what this recipe book for the virus looks like. Okay. What do you do with that information and how is it helpful, particularly in a South African context? Okay, so the, as the virus is transmitted from one person to the next, it uh, accumulates small changes. Um, and those small changes can allow you to organize the um, viruses in, around the world into kind of family trees or clusters. So then you can actually start seeing um, who is actually infecting who. So if we take what the work that our contact tracers are doing at the moment, they might encounter somebody who has COVID-19, but uh, they don't know where uh, they caught it. I mean, and then that, in fact, happened with trade union leader Zeran Dimavavi. He got sick, but he had no idea where he actually picked up the virus. So then if we look at the pattern of differences in the virus from one particular patient and then compare it to other patients, we can start getting a better picture of how the virus is spreading around the country and around the world. Okay. With that information and that insight, is that going to be helpful in finding a vaccine or something that will combat uh, perhaps one day protect people from COVID-19? Yeah. So, so when we're looking at vaccines, we have to look at the global population of viruses and see which bits are changing and which bits are staying the same because you want to target the bit that stays the same with um, the stable bit uh, with your vaccine, okay? So it works against all um, COVID-19. And also when you are looking into a treatment, then you have to understand how does this virus work? Viruses build proteins, these little kind of molecular machines to do what they need to do. So you're treatments are going to interfere with some parts of the virus life cycle. So um, understanding the diversity in the viruses and therefore what changes are possible in virus protein will give us some insight into which treatments have a better chance of working. We know that in, in the different parts of the world, as you've just explained, the, the virus may look slightly different. Are you seeing uh, now any specific changes and any specific things that may help people in the fight later on in the way that that virus looks? Okay, so what we're finding at the moment, and that was quite useful, is that the virus that we have here in South Africa, while it had six tiny differences from the uh, virus um, that was first found in China, uh, it was the same in terms of how it worked. We, we, we looked at each of the six differences and we looked to see if any of them would make a difference and not, the whole world has the same COVID-19 at this point. So that's good news, I think. 